Have you seen how Asian or Middle Eastern nations are depicted in movement plugs? The pictures are generally intriguing and enchanting, passing on a significantly unique culture from the West's sane and logical lifestyle. You should think about these portrayals to be innocuous, however as you'll learn in this outline, this just isn't the situation. Or maybe, these pictures comprise a route for the West to direct what the East does, by marking these nations with the bringing together term, the Orient. You'll figure out how Orientalism, the control of examining the Orient, has influenced and keeps on influencing relations between the East and the West. Notwithstanding investigating the recorded development of this group of information, these sections will likewise uncover how, as Nietzsche said, what acts like truth as a fiction we have failed to remember as a fiction. Chapter 1 Orientalism is a Western creation that manages a manufactured idea, the Orient. When you see a movement business for an Asian or Middle Eastern nation, how is the nation portrayed? Maybe the advertisement shows pictures and thoughts of exoticism and temptation that ooze a feeling of topographical and authentic distance. Despite there being an obsolete feel to such pictures, they keep on being typical today, and these portrayals can be connected to a collection of Western information called Orientalism. Orientalism built a particular picture of the East, referred to as the Orient, as a way to move toward it. Present-day Orientalism was imagined during Napoleon's endeavor to, and attack Egypt in 1798. Notwithstanding his military, Napoleon had brought along regular citizen researchers, researchers, and specialists who might deliver a 23-volume reference book on the nation, entitled Description of Egypt. This group of scientists was answerable for characterizing Orientalism, and the specialists on the East were known as Orientalists. This idea was fleshed out by other pilgrim powers, most prominently Britain during the 19th century, and was the focal point through which the West saw the whole Orient, which was considered to incorporate the Middle East, Asia, and the Far East. The subsequent picture of the East was an intriguing, suggestive, and nonsensical one, while Eastern generalizations found in movement diaries, papers, and logical distributions started to multiply. These introduced the Orient as intriguing and new, as one similarly bizarre and unfamiliar substance, paying little mind to the nation, individuals or culture, and as to where improper interests could go crazy. Sensuality was seen as the seal of the Orient, with groups of concubines saw as where the lewd Oriental could be found. At long last, individuals of the Orient were seen as silly and unequipped for a rationale, the going with the supposition that was that something contrary to these qualities was viewed as Western attributes. Chapter 2 Orientalism was impacted by financial and political interests and asserted information about the Orient that the Orient didn't have. The demonstration of considering something is certain, in that it empowers us to more readily comprehend the subject being referred to. Yet, imagine a scenario in which doing so really yields negative outcomes. This is actually what occurred with Orientalism, as it strengthened the enslavement of the regions under investigation. First of all, Orientalism, as science was filled with monetary and political interests, beginning with the Egyptian undertaking and attack, drove by Napoleon and his military. Napoleon's exploration endeavor included more than 150 researchers and researchers, and the Orientalist researchers that it produced filled in as teachers and counselors to frontier powers who wished to more readily comprehend their states, while additionally expanding their impact inside them. These examination groups ensured the French exchange Egypt, to acquire exchange from Egypt, and to have Egyptians uphold French interests, Napoleon enrolled nearby imams close by his Orientalist researchers to decipher the Koran so that portrayed the French armed forces quality as a bit of leeway to the area's occupants. With the assistance of his researchers, Napoleon described himself and his military as the genuine Muslims to assemble Egyptian help for French occupation. Moreover, Orientalism had the option to build up itself as an authority over individuals in the Orient, as it was guided by specialists who find out about the Old Orient than the actual individuals of the Orient. These researchers and language specialists found and interpreted antiquated Egyptian symbolic representations and uncovered already obscure archaeological burrows, uncovering old Egyptian landmarks. 
This information made it simpler for the Orientalists to state their strength and impact over the neighborhood individuals. Chapter 3 Financial Advancements Constrained Orientalism to Change and Adjust Have you ever met somebody you've heard so much about, yet the individual winds up being not in the slightest degree how you anticipated? Indeed, the picture of the Orient correspondingly didn't agree with the way many encountered the East, and this upset how Orientalists inspected the Orient. To start with, the encounters of authors and social researchers not, at this point coordinated with what was once recorded about the Orient. French writer Gérard Nerville, for instance, once impractically expounded on a past Orient that he had never really seen, yet which he just concocted in his book Voyage and Orient. At the point when he did at last visit the Orient, he was stunned to find that it didn't agree with his vision, a picture made by Orientalist practices and records. Second, anticolonialist and freedom developments in the 19th and 20th hundreds of years, for example, the Egyptian revolution against the British in 1919, forced Western countries to consider the East's perspective on itself. These obstruction developments and insurgencies gave the Orient force, and Orientalists had three different ways of reacting to this unsettling influence. In the initial two different ways, they would proceed to notice and archive the Orient as though it were a static article directed by writings, and they would likewise endeavor to decide how one's vision of the Orient needed to change given ongoing occasions. One illustration of these two techniques practically speaking is Orientalist student of history H.A.R. Gibb, who, in his 1945 talks at the University of Chicago, kept to the conventional Orientalist story. After 18 years, nonetheless, while the head of the Center for Middle Eastern Studies at Harvard University, he gave a talk on Territory Studies Reconsidered, which upheld the need to adjust exploration to the evolving scene. The third method of reacting to the Orient's recently discovered impact was to completely surrender the investigation of the East as the Orient, yet this methodology was genuinely considered by just a small bunch of Orientalists. Chapter 4 Orientalism attempted to demonstrate its primary discoveries about the Orient unexpectedly. After the obstruction and progressive developments in the East, the West discovered it progressively hard to spread its purported revelations. Orientalism reacted to this pattern in a couple of various ways. One methodology was to extend. To make up for their control's absence of discoveries, Orientalists pushed back the lines of the puts under investigation, while likewise becoming familiar with individuals there. 18th century Orientalism, as polished in British and French provinces, was first based on Islamic regions in Egypt and the Middle East. In the 19th century, it started including different domains, for example, India, China, and South America. Exchange advancement, travel compositions, logical detailing, and idealistic symbolism that exoticized these regions all aided the development of the topographical extent of the Orient. Another reaction was to go into an exchange with the Orient with the point of forming it. One illustration of this was a scholastic exploration in similar controls. For instance, George Sale's 1734 interpretation of the Koran and going with editorial was one of the principal analyses on the Orient that managed its subject by communicating with Arabic researchers. Instead of simply expressing what the Orient was, Sale was the first to banter with those living there and introduce their perspectives and records concerning the content. This undeniably more liberal mentality expanded correspondence between the West and the Orient. Nonetheless, even though there was discourse, it wasn't equivalent. While this discourse permitted researchers to report what individuals from the Orient needed to say, the subsequent discoveries were as yet utilized as a way to propel Orientalist points of Western expansionism and financial presence. For instance, the West-East Exchange implied that chairmen and functionaries from nearby populaces could help spread European thoughts. This occurred as ahead of schedule as the late 18th century with Napoleon's enrolling of muftis and imams, who, with the assistance of the Koran, supported the honesty of French presence to the Egyptians. Chapter 5 Two individuals, specifically, settled the discoveries of Orientalism as a science through the order. According to numerous Orientalist researchers, the most ideal approach to comprehend the Orient was to arrange its sorts of occupants, and this was finished by contemplating the locale's dialects. 
Silvestre de Sacy, 1758 to 1838, was among the first to order the Oriental attitude as per every district's dialects. De Sacy was a language specialist and joint author of the Asiatic Society, a French scholastic culture zeroed in completely on Asia. De Sacy accepted that intensive examination into the language of a people would offer a more profound comprehension of that culture's mindset. Shockingly, De Sacy was among the primary who needed to comprehend a language to comprehend the psyche utilizing it. Notwithstanding, his methodology overlooked etymological subtleties and varieties inside the Orient and sifted Oriental dialects through his local French. Rather than adjusting, De Sacy used French to epitomize the people groups of the Orient, with French thought about the exemplification of level headedness and rationale, and Semitic dialects encapsulated as unreasonable and emotive. To De Sacy, the speakers of the dialects and the actual dialects were indeed the very same. Ernest Renan, 1823 to 1892, proceeded with some of De Sacy's work, however, he rather associated language with race. There was a major pressure in Renan's work, which fit well with the principle of Orientalism, while he considered each to be as an improvement of a prior language and identified with others all through mankind's set of experiences, Renan zeroed in his work on how certain races were intrinsically better than others and, explicitly, how Europeans were better than Orientals. While accentuating authentic variety, Renan framed an Oriental sort revealing that their language delivered them unequipped for advancing to the level of the West. Chapter 6 The very apparatuses utilized by Orientalists to notice the Orient keep them from noticing its subtleties. When visiting an unfamiliar city, do you wind up expecting to maintain a strategic distance from any touristy exercises, and as opposed to needing to do as local people do? The Orientalists of the 19th century did precisely that to assemble more data about the Orient. Long visits and drenching in nearby societies permitted Orientalists to shape classes with which to notice the Orient. Edward William Lane, 1801-1876, creator of the manners and customs of modern Egyptians, 1836, an interpreter of 1001 Nights, is one model. The path went through a lot of his time on earth in the Orient, dressing in neighborhood attire styles and any event sending his sister to groups of concubines and ladies' bathhouses to examine the existences of Oriental ladies. There were two key parts to Lane's examination. First, he would inundate himself in day-by-day -day Oriental life, demandingly recording practices and schedules. Second, he would pull out from that life to have the option to report back on his discoveries. Be that as it may. Arrangements created by Orientalists blurred the subtleties of the way of life as referred to. Various practices and classifications made by the Orientalists made it especially hard to notice each culture's multifaceted nature. Classes, for example, Oriental, Semitic, Arab, Muslim, Jew, just as classifications of race, attitude, type, and country, while to some degree supportive, would at the same time protuberance varieties and variety inside people, families, and societies under a similar umbrella, in this manner clouding their various contrasts. Exemptions for general classes were viewed as offenses from general patterns and not worth investing a lot of energy in. For instance, Orientals were viewed as genuinely unreasonable and guided by energy, so any Oriental exhibiting clear soundness was essentially seen as a special case. Chapter 7 Expansionism, Opposition Developments, and the First and Second World Wars Changed Orientalism. The turn of the 20th century saw the ascent of an inexorably globalized and associated world, and the East started championing itself against European predominance. Anticolonialist opposition developments started to change relations between the Orient and the West. All in all, they caused the West, and explicitly Europe, to scrutinize its financial and political presence in the Orient. Such developments incorporated the Indian disobedience of 1857, the Egypt upsets of 1919 and 1952, and another enemy of pilgrim developments in African states. Bit by bit, the idea of the country-state turned into ideal worth copying, and the possibility of patriotism, which was moreover a European innovation, was utilized by settlements against their colonizers. Individuals in the Orient utilized the idea of country states against the West, 
marking the West as an unfamiliar intruder that was thwarting public sway while accepting the ideas of freedom, balance, and society. Country states, for example, France or England were seen as an ideal, and their ethics, for example, freedom, fairness, and clique, were to be embra. C.E.D. Notwithstanding these developments, the two world wars moreover moved the West's disposition toward the Orient. The world wars reduced European force and debilitated European regional cases around the planet. Following the two exorbitant wars, European countries could presently don't include themselves in the provinces however much they were already ready to, generally due to the huge labor force and gigantic amounts of cash needed to modify at home. Thus, settlements started to cost more than they were worth, which brought expanding monetary strain upon the frontier powers. Thus, this implied European forces could presently don't state their predominance over the East. The Orient hence became neither a financial asset to mine abundance from nor a crushed territory over which to run the show. Chapter 8 The United States has gotten the focal point of Orientalism today. You may imagine that as imperialism found some conclusion, Orientalism likewise finished. Orientalism, notwithstanding, is still a lot alive today. However, in another structure situated in the United States, and with three key qualities. The primary key attribute of this American brand of Orientalism is its quality in the famous creative mind. Take the idea of the Middle Easterner, for instance, which originally entered the Western creative mind during the oil emergency of 1973. During that time, pictures and sketches of an Arab sheik with a snared nose by an oil siphon were normal. These photos kept on utilizing Semitic pictures that were found in the enemy of Semitic leaflets all through the 19th and 20th hundreds of years. By portraying the Arab as the odd or crude other, the East was given a role as the lowlife in the famous creative mind, making it simpler for individuals to acknowledge the idea of Arabs being less socialized and giving an interminable defense to American intercession. The subsequent trademark is Orientalism's quality in colleges. Even though there might be no branches of Orientalism in essence, what used to go under that name keeps on being polished in the college framework across different orders, including political theory, humanism, human studies, history, and brain research. Here, generalizations of Eastern countries and individuals, alongside speculations alluding to Muslims, Middle Easterners, or Islamic laws and societies, are utilized, situating them as on a very basic level restricted toward the West and a danger to Western development. The third trademark is Orientalism's part in government strategies. Public strategy gatherings and research organizations uphold current Orientalism. Think about the expansive impact of Samuel P. Huntington's Clash of Civilizations, which is generally utilized as a source of perspective content to examine social contrasts. The thing that matters is outlined by applying the forceful word, conflict, recommending that central, hostile contrasts separate societies from each other. It's essential to take note of that books, for example, Huntington's, just as progressing research subsidized by think tanks, are utilized as a way to design international strategy, the subsequent information at that point turns into the predominant hypothesis behind Western government rehearses. Orientalism by Edward Said Book Summary Review The thought of Orientalism was created by the West trying to comprehend the East. Be that as it may, the Orient as it was made doesn't address the genuine East. Rather, it is a focal point through which the East was drawn closer, contemplated, and classified by the West through its creative mind. Tuning in for words and looking for symbolism develops understanding. The following time you see a news report on the Middle East or the Palestinian-Israeli clash, notice the manners by which the different sides are depicted, especially the descriptors and pictures utilized. The most ideal approach to comprehend the subtleties of contention is to see the words related to the two sides. Notice Western promoting of Eastern objections. The following time you see a movement promotion for an excursion in the Middle East, for example, in Dubai, Notice how the area is exoticized. You'll probably discover that the East gives off an impression of being an ageless spot and a hotel for the Western traveler to visit and find the region's fortunes.